Welcome back to another reactor tutorial. Today we're going to be working within Razor, one of my favorite additive synths of all time. Brilliant for making uh, a lot of really heavy bathe synths, has a good reputation for that, but it's also capable of so much more. Today we're going to dig in deep to the vocoder, how to make a layered uh, atmospheric uh, sound. You can actually hear it playing in the background right now. Um, and we're also going to talk about side chaining just a bit. So um, let's just go ahead and jump right into this. We're going to be uh, doing this more in a walkthrough fashion rather than reconstructing step by step just so we can spend our time a little bit more wisely here and uh, see exactly why everything is happening the way that it is and make sure that you understand how to recreate this. All right, so um, let's just run through the actual setup here really quick. Um, we have just barely a touch of glide on this bad boy. Um, you can see that it's actually, I think it was around three. Um, you can see the setting numbers right up here. If you're unfamiliar with uh, Razor, it's a beast of a synth. Um, go ahead and check out more tutorials on reactortutorials.com. Um, we have plenty there to get you started. Just search for Razor in the search bar. Um, pitch is set at zero. Um, no phase, no rant. Well, actually, actually, there's just a slight amount of randomization added there. Um, and that's just to help with the robotic chatter. So we've got a formant waveform uh, loaded into both um, oscillator 1 and 2, and you can see that they're both offset from each other just slightly. Um, the, the amplitude of both um, is right about the same. Uh, and the ratio, there's just a slight bit of difference there. Uh, they're both featuring just a, a fair amount of color, and there's some modulation coming from envelope 3. Envelope 3, as you can see, has a decent amount of attack um, and decay, with a fair amount of uh, uh, release as well, so it's it's kind of extended plus a bit of velocity control. There's uh, some echo happening from the echo panel right here, which does delay a signal, so there is a, a bit of a, a repeat sound happening here, um, and that's managed through the delay and the feedback. Um, and that's basically just to kind of soften and extend the sound, and you'll see what I mean as we get through this. Uh, this is then run through a vocoder, which we're going to come back to in just a second. Um, and then it passes through um, a comb filter, a notch comb filter specifically. Um, so it actually cuts out uh, big pieces of the frequency, as you'll see. Um, the attack and the decay and the dampening, these are pretty important um, on both of these, so make sure that you've got these down. The LFO is one that we haven't touched on yet. Uh, this is set to run in, um, in a beat. Uh, compared to a frequency rate, okay? So it's actually kind of syncing to uh, the beat of the project. The shape, the, is the wave that's actually running this is uh, a simple sine wave. Okay, and the speed's just been taken down to zero, so it, it happens at the slowest rate possible uh, in relation to the beat. Otherwise, it'd be very fast, and we don't want that. Uh, I've loaded a, a stretch uh, dissonance effect, and what that allows us to do, and you'll see that this is set up at negative uh, 12. This is basically stretching the sound down one octave. Um, and it's a pretty interesting thing. You'll see this more in action in just a moment. Um, again, LFO1 is being used to modulate. Uh, this. Or actually, maybe I have that. Nope, I have that currently turned off. So it's one more thing that you can do, but I don't necessarily recommend it, which is why I have that turned off. <laughs> uh, you get some crazy pitch bending going on in there. Um, I think when I was making this, I had a, uh, a different uh, effect plugged in there first, which is why that LFO was there. All right, um, and then we're using a synced reverb, which is um, a brilliant stereo effect. If you click in here, you see there are others to choose from, but the synced reverb um, is, it's almost like a combination uh, between a nice reverb uh, plus a synced delay or dimension expander. It's, it's, it's really nice. You'll hear it. It's a, a very big house sound. Um, and then some saturation on at the very end. Again, there are a couple others that you can choose from here, um, but specifically uh, the saturators used in this one with uh, about an equal amount of drive added to both the low and high frequencies. Um, the spectral clip is in use. Um, it's not doing a whole lot, but it is, it is uh, curbing our sound at a certain point, so the clip is above 1 o'clock. Uh, the pitch cutoff is uh, right around 11 o'clock, 11.30, and then the slope is uh, about 2, 2.30. Uh, now, let's listen to just the first part 
of this sound. And you'll notice that when I turn off the safe base, everything goes away. Okay, that's because the only thing generating sound right now is the safe base. Let's go ahead and jump into the second phrase of this arrangement, and you'll see that the break, uh, the beat uh, that we have um, loaded into this project is somehow affecting uh, this patch that we've made uh, in Razor. So go ahead and listen to that. So this is the work of the formant oscillators, the notch comb filter, and the vocoder. So how is the vocoder actually functioning? Well, it's being triggered by a sidechain signal, okay, which is running through bus 1. Uh, so if you come down here and you look uh, within our DAW, again, logic, DAW of choice for me, but this can be achieved in any program. So whether you're using Cubase, Ableton, uh, Fruity Loops, whatever, um, this is going to work for you. Uh, now this is set up as a pre-fader, okay, which means that the signal is actually going into um, uh, this auxiliary channel here which is then what is run through here uh, to, to trigger our sidechain or our vocoder specifically. And let's just listen to see what this beat sounds like on its own. It's uh, just something out of the stock loop, li loop library of uh, Logic, very simple. Okay, so nothing special, um, but again, we have that uh, taken out. So the beat actually has nothing uh, to do with the song uh, that this patch is going to be used in or any other part of this. It's just simply there as a trigger and the end result again we unmute this <laughs> is creating the chatter. Okay so now without the bus just listen what it sounds like. Not a whole lot because the vocoders enabled so you have to Disable the vocoder. Well, you're, really, you're really only getting what's coming through the the notch filter here. Okay, so there's nothing happening with the vocoder. Turn it back on, and you're back to normal. It takes a second for it to kick in. Especially if I don't have the bus selected. <laughs> Alright, so now you can kind of see uh, the inner workings of how you can trigger the vocoder through a side chain and also achieve simultaneously a layered uh, synth. And the way that you do that is just use the safe base. Um, so it's a it's a rather unique workaround uh, for the way that this synth is set up. But uh, layered sounds are absolutely possible, and safe base is not necessarily just for dubstep basses uh, or or heavy basses. Um, so. That's it. Um, oh, and one more thing. You can see that envelope 2 um, is actually the envelope that is set to modulate or affect our sidechain. Okay, so it's a very standard setting over here. Um, pretty basic amount of um, attack, decay, sustain, and release. Um, but there you have it. That's how uh, this whole thing comes together. You have questions, comments, maybe you have a sound similar to this that you want to share. Uh, we definitely encourage you to visit um, our forums. You can find the link at the bottom of this post. Um, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. Cheers. <laughs>